Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and I am so super excited about the project that I'm going to show you how to make today because I can't stand the idea of things going into landfills or being just tossed when they could be repurposed. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be repurposing some sweaters. Mine came from Goodwill. I have three, I'll show you. Uh, but maybe you have some in your closet. And mine are, of course, all cream colored because as somebody said earlier today, I am the queen of cream. Um, but you could use a print, some, a red Christmas sweater, a green Christmas sweater, gray, purple, blue, orange, pink, whatever you like. So this is one. Here's another. I've used a little bit of this. This one, when I got it at Goodwill, it had some stains on it. So I'm try I didn't realize how many stains it had on it until I got it home and washed it. And by the way, that's important. Uh, when you get a sweater that you're gonna use for crafting, um, toss it in the wash uh, with some towels or something just to get it good and clean. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm super scent sensitive. So when things smell, it really bothers me. So this is one, and here's another. They all three came from Goodwill. I love this one. Um, this sweater that I have on right now is also one that I bought at Goodwill uh, a month ago or something like that, and it was too pretty. It fit me. I couldn't uh bear the idea of cutting it up so okay so that's the first thing you're going to need is sweaters i'm also going to show you this same idea but we're going to be using this is um cotton batting for inside of a quilt oh my gosh and i just absolutely love the look of this so we'll be using uh, sweaters then we'll be using a variety of lace and trim you know, you're going to pick out your lace and trim based on what colors you're doing. Um, you could do pom-poms. You could do printed ribbon. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, I, of course, am going to be using lots of buttons because buttons are my thing. But you could also use bling. And um, really, you can just... What I want to do is show you how easy this idea is today, and then I want to encourage you to give it a try, and then I want to see pictures of what you make. So, um, let's see. Also, I made some bows for some of these, which I'll show you that step. And I did my friend Melanie Ferguson's style of a messy bow. She uses zip ties, and I really like to use zip ties too. These came from Dollar Tree. You can use tool, oh my gosh. You could just, this could be whatever you want it to be. This one might be my favorite so far. This lace right here is some lace that I borrowed from my mother when I was in Idaho visiting over Thanksgiving before I got COVID. And it's lace that she used when she sewed my prom dress. Uh, when I was 17 years old, so it's been a long, long time, so it's fun to use stuff like that, I think. So that is one. Here's another one that I love, and it ha does have a button hiding in there. This is that cable knit sweater, that cream colored one that has the stains on it. Here is a little heart. And I hung the hearts to the side because I think they look cuter that way. But I put some bling on it, some pom-poms, some lace. Here's a <clears throat> plainer one that I, everything has glue strings on it, that I, um, I, I, I did not sew this button on, but you can see it has some definition because I glued a round blob in the center of this, okay? And then I put the lace from Dollar Tree around the outside. Here is a mitten that I made from that gray sweater. And here's 
another little heart that I made from this sweater that has the pearls on it. And we're gonna, so we're gonna do some. I just wanted to get your creative juices flowing and give you as many ideas as possible and tell you just to collect a bunch of stuff. Like I have a box here that has all kinds of vintage doilies, lace, cream ribbon, vintage rick rack. It has all kinds of good stuff like that. So collect a bunch of things together. You can also use pom-poms. These are both from Dollar, I think, this was this one from Dollar Tree? No, this was from Walmart, and these were from Dollar Tree. So you can just be as creative as you want. Okay, so how is everyone doing today? If you have questions along the way, don't hesitate to ask. If you like this video, I would love it if you would sprinkle, because that's what helps my DIY dreaming page grow. Okay, so before I came live, I made all of these, obviously, and I want to show you my patterns. Did I keep the piece of paper? I just cut a heart out of a piece of computer paper that I folded in half. I'm going to measure this because I know someone will ask, but it's nothing specific. Do your hearts if you want to do those in whatever shape you like. This one is five inches wide right here. And, you know, I don't know how to measure. It's four inches from here to here. Okay? So that's one pattern I made, and I um, cut out some quilt padding before I came live in the heart shape that we'll be playing with. And then this is my mitten pattern, which it's pinned up to a sweater piece. And this is how I like to do these. Most of the time is I'll make a pattern, and then I'll just pin it on and cut out two, two pieces, front and back, all at once. Um, okay, so let me tell you about the mitten pattern. For the mitten one, I just searched on Pinterest, mitten pattern. And I got a, sh I got a printout that had several sizes of mittens, and this is the one I opted for, and I cut it out. I don't feel like it would be right or ethical for me to share somebody else's printable here. I'm sorry, but it's super easy. You can just, and mittens are not hard to cut out anyways, but just um, either go to Pinterest and search mitten pattern or go to Google and search mitten pattern or just sketch one. This one is not quite six inches long and it's around four inches wide, okay? And when I was cutting this out, I cut it at the bottom of a sleeve. I'm gonna show you this one, uh, because then it has a cuff. Where did I put that? Okay, it's right here. This is the sleeve I've cut and I've been playing with. This is the other sleeve. So I would just pin And I wanted the cup to be a little bit longer. So this is basically what I did. Can you see that? So this finished part of the cup on the sleeve, it's not even a cup, it's just the, I don't know what you call that. That is, will be the top of my mitten and I could fold it over if I want. Although I don't know if I will or not. So that's how you get started. And let's do this mitten one first, and I'll show you a bunch of tricks. When you're working with sweaters, one thing you're going to find is that they kind of want to fray at the edges. Can you see that? So I figured out a trick that is helping a little bit. Um, and I am using my low temperature sure bonder cool shot low temperature glue device and I'm using that low temperature 
This is um, Sherbonder brand from Walmart. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. You can get them all over. This is just a mini as a quarter. It's under $10. Okay, so when I'm gluing my front and back together, I'm going to put a generous amount of glue towards the edge. And then I could use a finger, you know, one of those things. I'm just going to press the glue into this the sweater so it's almost squeezing out the edges and then I'll trim that and that will keep it from fraying. That's my plan anyways. Okay, so let's keep going on this. These could be absolutely whatever size you want. I was thinking that I might do a banner uh, with hearts with this idea. Of course, it'll be in cream. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, after Christmas, we have a month of January, and then we have February, and hearts say Valentine's Day to me. They scream Valentine's Day to me, and they're just, they're a great symbol, so I like to do a lot of heart crafts in February. So I'm just gluing close out to the edge, and then I'm pinching the glue, so you can see in a couple places where it's actually poking out. <laughs> oh, Loretta, I read your message earlier. Loretta has lost her son recently. And I think it was earlier this week. She's in Eastern Washington. Loretta, my heart breaks for you. I am so, 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 so sorry. I cannot even imagine, but what I can do is I can pray for you, that God will comfort you, that you'll, you won't feel alone, that you'll, I don't know, I don't even know exactly how to pray for somebody in your situation, but I'd ask the other followers here also to pray for her. Um, and if you need some crafting therapy, go check in your closet and see if you have any sweaters because you can make these ornaments super easy and they cost virtually nothing. You could do this also with like a flannel shirt. It doesn't have to be a sweater, but that is the look I'm going for. And you're going to get glue on your fingers. That's why I really seriously encourage you to use a low temperature hot glue. See, and the glue's going to kind of get pinched out the edges a little bit. All right, now we're going to trim it. I'm going to trim off. Um, where are my scissors? Oh, you guys are so sweet to reach out to Loretta. I saw your message earlier today, and I just thought, oh, that is just heartbreaking. So I'm just trimming, like, in the areas where I didn't get my front and back matched up very well. This is kind of a messy craft. I had on a, a dark colored turtleneck earlier and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be covered in glue strings and little bits of cream fabric. So I switched to this. Okay, so here is my stocking. Not stocking, my mitten, sorry. And you could fold that top part over could be super cute if you want or you could just cover it which is what we probably will do oh gosh this side is a mess and you know when you're th these could be either ornaments or they could be double fillers and um, so this kind of thing I want the front and the back to both look pretty decent If 
I didn't have other adult responsibilities, I would make about 10,000 of these. Okay, we, I can trim it up a little bit more after. Okay, now I need to decide how I want to doll it up. And there are so many options. I think I'm going to do it like this one. And then we'll stuff it. Okay, so I need, but I can use whatever lace I want. And this is a whole thing of lace that um, one of my followers sent me over a year ago. And I thought, when she sent it to me, I thought, huh, I wonder if I'll ever use that. And I have used it so much lately. So I don't remember who it was that sent it to me. I need to make an, a notebook and write those things down. But anyways, if it was you, thank you. I love this. So I'm going to do it so that the little ruffle at the bottom is on the mitten. And that means I need to cut this a little bit smaller because it's too long. And I could put a little bit of uh, lace or something on the top to cover it where I cut it. Really? What I want to do today with you guys is just give you a million ideas and show you how super simple this is because it is super duper duper simple. And I can turn this up in a minute and inspire you to use what you have, the colors that you love. I'm not gluing them in closed yet. I'm just gluing, putting some glue on this to lay my lace into. But I just... My goal is just to show you how easy, give you an idea, inspire you to do it. Especially, like if you're doing an ornament exchange or something, I think it would be so wonderful, I would totally love it, to give uh, ornaments that have been created, that I made, or that somebody else made. Okay, so there's the front. And then I cut it way too long. Let's put this side on. And I will hang on to these little scraps um, because I can use them for future things. And speaking of scraps and stuff, do, do you guys remember when we made these? I called them lacy rag trees. These are a bunch of the same kind of things. Muslin, canvas duck cloth, lace, multiple kinds. Um, there is some tool in here. Uh, so don't throw little bits away because you just never know when you'll be able to use them for a future project. Okay, and I'm going to trim that up. Look at my fingers. Thank goodness I'm using this low temperature hot glue. So be sure that you leave the top of your, if you're making these mittens, that you leave that open. See, mine is still open. Okay, and then... This is the front, the back is where I have it folded over. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to do that Melanie Ferguson messy bow. And what should we use? Let's use some of this um, cotton batting. I thought I had a couple pieces out here somewhere. Let's use some bling. 
let me just cut a couple pieces. I'm going to do that crisscross thing. And I'm not making these super big. Some half. So this is the cotton batting that goes in the quilt. And before I do anything else, I'm going to dovetail the ends of it. That makes it so much easier if you do that now, as opposed to once your boat is assembled. So I have two pieces there. And let's just do a little crisscross. Can you guys see that? The great thing about these messy bows is that they're messy. Seriously. Okay. Which lace do I want my news? Let's use some of this because it's a little bit darker. And these laces I bought at Hobby Lobby, most of these. And they weren't on sale, but I needed them. So I'm going to enjoy them, but normally I will wait for lace or ribbon or any of that kind of stuff to be on sale before I'll purchase at Hobby Lobby. Chris Cross. These are going to be way too long. Let's make them shorter. If you're doing uh, this project, um, just know that you could, if you wanted, use a sewing machine. I am, I have a sewing machine and I know how to sew. I'm not great, but I know how to do it basically. So I could do that, but not everybody has one of those. So just in an effort to make this super friendly to everyone, that's why I didn't, uh, why I'm not sewing, why I'm gluing, because most people know how to hot glue. Okay, and this is just a piece of tool two pieces of it. Let's try to do a little crisscross. That's hard with this stuff. I'm just going to kind of roll it up. And I'm going to put this on top of it. Cute. Okay, so I know there's a million and one different ways out there to make a messy bow. This is the way that I'm currently doing it the most. These are little nylon cable ties, little zip ties. They come in all different sizes. These are kind of big, but they're what I currently have. And I'm just gonna run it underneath the whole pile. <laughs> My word, I wanna get this stocking, this mitten finished so that we can go on to the heart because I want to show you how to create definition with glue. So, okay, let's flip it over and hold it down. And I'm just going to tighten this up. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. And I'm going to cut this tail off of my zip tie. Try to flatten my little bow out. And then, oh my word, it's hot in here. Or maybe my sweater's just hot. I'm going to turn on the fan in just a second. And then I'm going to choose a button. These buttons that I'm working with today are not vintage. Um, I picked them up at an antique store, though, uh, for $20 or $25. They're abalone. And I think they're as pretty as um, Mother Pearl. See, you can see where they came out of the shell on the back. So let's put a little bit of glue on the center of our little bow. Okay, and now we need to create the hanger, which I'm going to use the same lace. And I'm just going to create a loop. 
Easy peasy. Okay, let me tell you how long this is because I know someone will ask. But it, it's just, I just eyeball things. It's a little bit more than seven inches long. Okay, and I like to put the decoration on the outside of the mitten, not the side that has the thumb, but that's personal preference. And I'm just going to glue, put a little bit of glue on the back of this and stick my lace in there, do a loop, and then I'll stick the other side in, into that glue. So you can see that's what we have, easy peasy. Okay, and then I'm gonna glue my little bow on here. This is super cute on these two pom-poms. Thank you guys so much for the stars. Wow, I really appreciate that. This is a little long on this side. Okay, let's stuff this puppy. I just pulled some polyfill out of a pillow from Walmart. Um, it's not even polyfill, it's pillow stuffing because last time I was in the market for polyfill, I couldn't find it. So I just bought some uh, a, a firm pillow and cut one end open and I've been pulling the fluff out of there. And I'm going to use an eraser and a pencil to get this down there. little teeny bit in the thumb of this mitten. Let's try. And then you can fill these as full or not as you like. And I'm just going to, is that just a little bit more? Then I can squish it around where I want it. You guys, these are the, okay, so let me back up. My Goodwill lately, it's not mine. It's the one in my area that I go to the most. Um, I don't know what's going on with them. Their pricing is crazy. Some things are beyond reasonable. And then other things are ridiculous, like this sweater that I didn't notice had so many stains on it. I mean, it seriously does. Looks like somebody spilled a cup of coffee in about 10 places. It was $6.54. Um, but then you can pick up other things at Goodwill that are completely reasonable. So I don't know. Look at your own closet first. Or if you have a significant other. Or a son or a daughter. Look in their closets. Ask your neighbors. So this, just to repeat, what this is here, it's the same as what I used on this one. This is quilt batting from a fabric store. Um, this is what it looks like when I bought it here in Georgia. Warm and natural. Needled cotton batting. Um, it comes in different sizes, probably in different thicknesses too. But this is, I just picked up a little square of it while I was in Idaho before I ended up with COVID to work on that. that lace Christmas tree I was doing. So what do you think? That's pretty, I think it's pretty cute. These are gonna be so pretty on my tree. Okay, so then the next thing is, let's talk about using a sweater. It's exactly the same process. This one has a button and pom-poms, exactly the same process. I folded the cuff 
of this down. And here's a planner one that I just cut in a heart shape. I put my hanger on the side and you can see there's some definition because of where I put the glue. I wanna show you how to do that next. Here's another one that's kind of plain and you can see the definition or where it has some shape to it where I glued a strip right here because I knew I was going to be wanting to put three buttons on there. So this is the, the sweater that has the pearl buttons on it. It's just plain, soft. And this is the cable knit one in ivory. And here's another cable knit one where I ran it the opposite direction. So you can get creative and vary things up easy and this one has some bling on it but same deal with the hanger I like them on the edge so your heart kind of hangs crooked I don't know what you guys think about that but I think it's cuter okay um so I have I guess I don't have one cut out yet. Is this, this is the quilt batting. Let's cut one out. Um, let's cut one out in, did I not do that? I could have sworn I did. Okay, well that's all right. We'll do it in this. So, I am just going to take my heart. And I'm going to lay it on this sleeve. And pin it on. So I'm, I'm cutting the front and the back at the same time. I have found that it is easier to cut it out if you free it from the sweater. So let's do that first. So I'm just going to free this from the sweater. There's still tons left to work with. Wait, where did my sleep? Oh, here it is. Okay, and with these really soft sweaters, you do need to put a lot of pins on so that your sweaters don't come apart and so that you kind of have a matching front and back. Okay, so we'll cut this out, and I'll come back later and trim it all up. What is the name of the batting? Well, this is just one brand that I have purchased. Um, I tend to use this a lot because it's in my color scheme, and I just love the way it feels and looks. Oops. This brand right here came from Walmart. It's warm and natural, needle-punched, um, needle cotton batting for quilts. Uh, I think Warm and Natural is the brand. Okay, so let's cut this out real quick. And I'll come back and clean it up. do as much preparation before I get started as possible so that you're not waiting and I could have sworn maybe I'll find it later that I did this sweater in a heart shape it might be underneath all my piles of stuff because I don't want you guys sitting around you know twiddling your thumbs 
to watch me paint things or cut things out, but I messed up here. Okay, so here's the front and the back. And this is just that plain creamy sweater that has the pearls. And my sweaters came from Goodwill. You could find stuff like this at garage sales, uh, in your own closet. Um, you can ask around. Okay, I'm gonna start out at the bottom of this, at the point, and I'm gonna glue that together. And it's the same idea. You wanna put a good, generous coat or layer of glue and then push it sort of out to the edge and that will keep it from not fraying so much. Okay, now let's create some definition. And let's just do another one like this one. And I'll stuff this one fuller so you'll be able to see it better. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull up the top flap and find a spot somewhere on here. And you can do a big blob of glue or you could do a circle, whatever you want. I don't want it to glue the pieces together beyond this circle. And we'll cover that with a button. So, so basically, there's a circle in the center of this. Can you kind of see that? All right, let's finish up. We'll go, um, we're gonna leave the top open. We gotta put our hanger in. Ooh, that was hot. My hot glue device has gotten a major workout lately. Okay, let me decide what's going to be the front or the back. I think this will be the front. So I'm going to choose this thin, where's that thinner, this, this lace. Dollar Tree has something very similar. And I'm just going to do a loop in that corner. You, of course, could hang it in the center, however you want. Everything is personal preference, if you ask me. That is going to be way too long. Cut it off, and then I'm going to throw this little piece in my box of lacy goodies. Okay, so when you have something in the center, you need to stuff down the sides and to the bottom before you get it very closed up. Let me grab some more stuff and fluff. This is my pillow in case you're curious. Walmart brand, it's uh, extra firm mainstays. And it was probably $8 or something. So in a lot of instances, this kind of thing will be less expensive than usually using actual polyfill. But I do like actual polyfill a little better. I like the really um, sturdy stuff that's meant for making dolls. I find that that, I don't know, it, it stands up nicer, or it has, I don't know, something about it I like better, but, okay, so I'm just stuffing around this center that I glued. What do you guys think? Do you like this idea? If you do like it, I would love it if you would consider sprinkling this to your um, social media. Um, if you have friends that like to craft or like to do Christmas decorating or whatever, uh, all in all that just helps me a ton. 
Okay, now I'm going to, let's take this out. I'm gonna do the V, and I'm gonna leave the very top of this open, and we'll finish the stuffing from the very tops. Look at my. Okay. Okay, so I have a hole here and a hole here. And let's trim the glue that is squeezed out. I have had so much fun this year making Christmas ornaments, different things here on DIY Dreaming. Last year, just so you know, last year I had a red and white Christmas, uh, what's the right word to say? All my Christmas decorating, my tree and everything was all a theme of red and white. So this year, just to do something different and spice it up, I decided to go really natural with creams and a little bit of lighter wood tones. So I am actually able to use bright colors but this year I opted not to. Okay, so I've got that stuffed. Let's finish the top of this one. Do be careful because this fill, this pillow stuffing, even with the low temperature hot glue, it gets extremely hot. So you don't want to get that on your fingers. Can you see how it's starting to take shape. Let's finish this side. And then we'll embellish it. And then I'll show you everything one more time. I will get lots of pictures and I'll put those here in the comments. I will um, also just do a post here on DIY Dreaming with pictures of everything. And if you decide to make some of these, I would love to see what you do. That is so much fun for me. Um, I set up a group two or three years ago called Dreamy DIY. Um, it's a free group on Facebook. And I set it up as a place where we could all post pictures of our projects to get even more ideas. And, um, you know, some, some affirmation, which sometimes women need that. I know I do. Uh, because when I'm crafting here at home, I have a husband and two sons, you know, they're great, but they don't care a, one whit about my crafts. So if I go racing out of my craft room and say, look, look, look at what I made, they're like, oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> but if you make something and you post pictures over in this group, you're going to have people that are going to say, oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. It's fabulous, blah, blah, blah. And that is just, that feels good. Okay, so let's do something here. Let's do some lace. Let's go match. Uh, like a crisscross lace. And um, some of this grow gray ribbon, which is really nice. This is Dollar Tree Grow Grain Ribbon. And then I'll put a button in the center. We'll keep this one pretty simple. Briar? Hang on two seconds. Somebody is knocking at the door. Oh, it was my dog! And she wasn't really knocking, she, her tail was wagging. That scared me. I thought it was my husband knocking on the door, which would be very odd, because he, he tries never to disturb me while I'm live, unless it's something majorly important. But Mia, my puppy, she has no clue. Okay, so I just snipped some dovetails there. And 
and I will clean this all up after, but let's just proceed with these two things. That will be plenty. Where are my good ties? Oh, thank you, Stephanie. Bryden Boss says, what, these are lovely, what a wonderful idea. They're, um, I think they're lovely. Whoops, that's the wrong way. But also, I love the fact that I'm preventing some part of a sweater from just going into the landfill. And I'm using little bits and pieces of things that I love. And these are almost, these project, these ornaments are almost free. What is the deal? This zip tie doesn't have any, um, doesn't really have any teeth on it. Let me get a different one. Okay, let's try that one more time. You could just pinch this together and cover it in a ribbon if you want it. This is what I like about these zip ties being so long. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna hold it down. And pull that pretty good and tight. a quick button. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to continue on using the same style. This one I love so much. On it. And I'm putting the holes for the button up and down. It looks less like a button, I think, when you do it that way. Okay, so I'm going to glue this here in the center. And that, I think that's going to be super cute. And I will fiddle later. I'll cut the lace a little bit shorter and do all that good stuff. Let's just glue it right now. So what do you think about that one? Isn't it pretty? And I got this definition just by putting some glue in the center before I stuffed it and then I kind of stuffed around it. Okay, so let me review with you guys some of the different ones that I have made. Disaster in here. So let me just get rid of this. That way, if, if anyone wants to take screenshots, I know people do, um, it will have somewhat of a neat background. Okay, so this one, and I don't have enough. Oh, you know what? I didn't do it. Um, this one and this one, I'll finish this one, are made using cotton batting, which I love. It's thick, it has kind of like a texture to it. So if you don't have a sweater, you could try that. And I used some of my old prom dress lace and just a variety of little bits and pieces. Okay, and then this one and this one were made 
using this sweater that has all the stains on it. This one has some of that pom-pom lace. Isn't it cute? And here's this planar heart, which I could embellish some more if I want. But sometimes I like to mix in, um, you know, not have everything be so busy. Okay. And then this one and this one right here. Um... Yeah, this is the sweater material, sorry, it's not the cotton batting. This little lace, little mitten, and this one, and this one, were all made with this sweater, with just part of one sleeve of this sweater, which this is, um, it's 100% acrylic, but it was nice. And I washed everything. I think that's super important. Okay, so there are those. And then this, oh, and here's one more that I didn't show you yet. This one, they're all essentially the same thing. But this one, I put some bling, a little blingy cross in the center. And then this one is plainer. This was my first experiment with the idea, and I did it using this turtleneck sweater. So tell me which ones you like. Where did I get the pom-pom ribbon? Uh, I think I found this stuff in this creamy color at Hobby Lobby. And I believe I bought it on the same day that I bought this, and it was not on sale. So it was probably like $5 for a spool of it, and I've used a ton of it on other projects. Um, so I want to know who's going to make some of these ornaments. Um, what color are you going to make them in? I'd love to know that. Um, oops, I'm trying to get these all in one camera shot. I don't know if I did it or not, but anyways. That was the project for today, so I'm going to check off my list, the sweater, heart, and mitten ornaments. Next up, I'm going to attempt to make a Christmas holly berry pillow. So that'll be tomorrow um, or possibly over the weekend. Um, and then I have all kinds of other fun things to show you. Yes, you can make these for Valentine's Day. That's exactly what I was thinking. And MagnoliaDIY.com, they have this awesome banner that has like 10 flags. It's pre-made, it's super nice, and it's this creamy color. And I was thinking just to do some hearts in cotton batting and sweater. You only have to stuff just, I mean, you don't need two pieces, you just need the front. And but that would be really fun for right now because it would totally go with my theme. And it would also be wonderful come Valentine's Day. Alrighty. You guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to everyone who did stars. Thank you so much to everyone who sprinkled. Um, thank you for all of your sweet, sweet comments. I did get a pattern off the internet for this mitten. I'm just going to answer a couple more questions. Um, I just typed in mitten pattern in Pinterest and I pulled it up. <clears throat> but because I don't own it and it said for personal use only, I don't think it would be ethical for me to share that printable here on my page. And um, But it's super easy to find. And so just just either Google Mitten 
mitten cut out or mitten printable or do it on Pinterest and I know you'll be able and you can sketch this it's not hard okay how I'm gonna go take this hot sweater off because I am just roasting underneath these hot lights and in this turtleneck but I hope you got some good ideas I hope I inspired you I hope you decide to do something like this and that you saw how super simple and super affordable it could be. Alrighty, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Yeah, check the internet, Gloria. Um, do it this or this, that's a heart. Or say something to me in the comments and check to see if you've liked and followed this page and turn on your notifications. Those things will help improve your odds that Facebook will ever serve you my videos again it's not a guarantee but those do seem to help so do that and um i will see you guys later bye oh, i hate to hang up when i see all these hearts being slammed so let me just hold these up for one quick second of course they have a million glue strings that need to be cleaned up I love this one. I love them all, really. This was that last one that we did. You can see how we created the definition. I need to clean this one up. Here's another adorable one. Here's another adorable one. This one is a little bit longer. I was going to fold part of it over and I ended up not doing that. That's why it's so long. It looks more like a, like a long mitten. This one has that definition, and yeah, I think I've showed you everything. Alrighty, I'll see you guys later.